Hi, I'm Rob Cos and welcome to my shop. I want to talk about tool storage cabinet ideas. When done right, it really enhances your time in the shop. My saw till is a great way and a convenient way of storing your saws. Stay with me, I'll show you how I did it. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell, which will alert you whenever we release a new video. Anytime we use a new tool or technique, we'll leave a description down below so that make it easier for you to find. All right, let's get back to work. Now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna show you how I came up with the uh, saw till idea and how I made it. And I'm gonna walk you through the process of making one of these pockets. So if you decide you wanna do it yourself, you'll be able to. I first got the idea for my traveling tool cabinet. And I made some modifications, but the idea was obviously I had very limited space and I needed to be able to use up in here. And of course you can't be lifting the saws up. If you do, you'd lose all of that. So by swinging them out like this, I could easily grab whichever one I want, kept it fairly well protected. But you'll also notice that there's a lot of saw blade exposed, which on more than one occasion, I've actually run my knuckles by those. And by the way, they just simply pivot on it. There's a pivot pin right here in the front and they just fall back by gravity, which keeps them in place. So we made them a little bit bigger, so you covered all of the blade, and that just kept it so that not only did it keep the blade from getting damaged, but kept me from skinning my knuckles. So what we're going to do, I'm gonna walk you through the process of building one of these blocks, show you where the pivot pin needs to go, and then, as I said, you'll be able to do it yourself. I'm going to make it out of poplar. Now you don't wanna use a soft wood just because um, the abuse that it takes with the saw sliding in and sliding out and you also need a fair bit of strength in the material for that pivot pin so when that comes down like that it doesn't end up breaking that piece of wood. It's already broken this one where I have my squares and that was because the wood just wasn't simply or simply wasn't strong enough. So I'm going to use poplar. Of course you could use any hardwood. I need to mill these up and the dimension that I, I want in order to hold the saw is uh, 20 inches, uh, no sorry, 12 inches in length, four and four and a half in width, and we need it to be wide enough so that there's a little bit of space between each of the handles. Now my handle is an inch wide, so that means our blocks need to be at least an inch, preferably a little bit more. I'm gonna suggest we have an eighth of an inch, I sorry, pardon me, a sixteenth of an inch on either side, and if you do that with each one, that'll give you an eighth of an inch between them. I milled, I milled two pieces of poplar. I actually kept them a little bit heavy just so I could hand plane them to a final finish. So it's a strong inch and an eighth when they're combined. So what we want to do is lay our saw in such a way that all of the handles will be in the same spot. So the blades are bigger, but that's okay because it'll run down this way. We're going to keep the top where we want it. And I actually want this end of the... Uh, of the till to come right up against this flat spot. And if your saw is designed differently, then of course you can judge it or uh, adjust accordingly. I want a half an inch of material left up here in the top, just so that there's lots there to work with. So we're gonna go right to about there. So the piece of brass on this saw is seven eighths of an inch wide. And on some of my saws, it's up to an inch. So again, I'll go down below. So I'm gonna go from Start at the half inch mark, and I'm going to cut down to uh, say about an inch and a sixteenth. Now, this is a quarter of an inch thick, so that means I need to take at least an eighth of an inch off each one, but I want to be a strong eighth of an inch, just so it's not jammed in there. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we've got to allow for the blade, and because we're going to make this fit all the saws will come down oh let's see we'll come down to where we are five sixteenths of an inch off the bottom so that will certainly accommodate the deepest saw I'm going to put in there and I actually have one that's even deeper and that will accommodate for that as well so we're going to rip these, or we're going to do these on the table saw. And the first thing we'll do is we'll cut 
this one. A little more than eighth of an inch deep. We can run it all the way. Doesn't matter that it's going to be open at the end. You're not going to see the bottom. We'll do that one first. And then while it gives us some support for our router plane to clean it up, we'll do that first. Then we'll come in and we'll cut away the, cut away the rest of this section to accommodate for the blade. And that's going to be rather shallow. Okay, I'm going to use a scrap to set this. I've got a rip blade, so it'll give me a square bottom. Now that's a little more than an eighth, probably more than I need, so I'm going to back that off a little bit. And that's not quite an eighth. And that is right at an eighth. That'll allow me to take a little more with my router plane. So I'll do both of these at the same time. And what I'll do is just put, run one over, run the other one over, then move the fence each time. You could set up a dado blade to do it, but I've got time. You could use a power router if you want. I just find this a lot quieter, much easier to control. And get right into that corner. Now, obviously I didn't get the same depth on the table saw because I haven't even contacted the surface down there, so. Go a little bit lower. I'm not taking off a lot, so I can, I'll be able to use this on both without stopping to do the other one first before I made that last adjustment. If I was taking off a lot of material, I would do each one before going any further with advancing the cutter. Okay, check the depth. It's just a little more than an eighth. And I'm going to have to take a little bit off of that surface in order to get a really good glue joint. But I'm just going to see if I can stick the end of the saw in there and see if it's going to fit. Yeah, there's lots of room. Okay, now the rest of it part for the blade we can actually do that with the router plane because it's not very deep at all so since I'm going to make this one specifically for the dovetail I don't need to make it as deep so we'll go down to about here Since I want those two to line up when I put it together, I think what I'll do is I'll go over to the table saw and I'll make one shallow cut here to the depth I want and then I can just go ahead and catch it up with all the rest of them. But I don't want to make that many passes with a blade that's a little less than an eighth of an inch. The 
This is an example of where you want that wider base since I'm resting off of here and here. Perfect. Okay, if you want an exceptional glue joint, we'll go in and plane those two surfaces. Now it's just a little strip here and a little strip there, so it's not a lot of work. Still got some mill marks right there. One more. I'm doing it at an angle like that so I can reference off of this surface, keep the plane from tipping. together again to make sure we've still got the depth we need. Mm, it's a little too snug. So I'm gonna go in. I've already I've got my I've got my uh, router plane still set up. So it will just take off from here the amount that we just took off up there, which means I don't have to change anything. Okay, I'm gonna put some tape on here just while I'm gluing. Just to make it a little easier. This has to come off before we put it together. I'm only gonna glue one side. I'm just going to put light pressure on here for the at first because I might have to put clamps, stretch a cramp or clamp across the width to keep these in place. No, that's stayed flush underneath, so that's good. Okay, we'll give that 20 minutes in the clamp. Now, before I do anything, I want to clean up, flush everything up. 
The easiest way to do that is a shooting board in the plane. Okay, now we've got to get the shape of our handle. So the first thing I want to do is put the, uh, carry this mark over. Actually what we should do is put this in here based on where that's going to rest. So we're going to start our handle right on this line. Now to get the shape, it's probably easiest to just take a piece of cardstock, hold that where you want it, and then just freehand. I'm going to go a little farther than that. Cut it out with a pair of scissors. And we need to... Now I'm eyeballing it along here, referencing off the top of the saw. So we need to... Still not quite. You get closer now, you can actually reference the, the uh, pencil right against the handle. So we reference this. We reference that eighth of an inch from the top. And that mark we put on there actually, that represents the handle, so that's where we want to put it. better days. Now you can do this if you don't have a rasp. You can always do this with a piece of wood and some sandpaper. But getting those burns out takes a fair bit so that's why I chose to use a rasp. Before I go any further, I want to check and make sure that we can how that fits. Yeah, we 
take a little more off of that, but. No, I actually wanted that to go all the way down to touch there. I gotta go ahead and do that again. I didn't take that as far as I want to because I want to get all of that blade hidden. Yeah, we should have went to there. I gotta go repeat all that process. Okay, I would take that and maybe a little more work to get rid of those scratches. Let's check the fit. Okay, that sits down in there. Now. No plane tracks. I just want to get rid of the pencil mark I left on there. Now, if you want, you can break those corners, either a radius or a small chamfer. Now, if I was to do it over again, I might have left a little more room for the blade, but it's, uh, it'll move in and out, a little bit snug. Now the next thing we need to do, is I cut a little V groove right on the t right on that slot where the, it just helps guide the saw in. It's just a matter of going in there and you're cutting both sides at the same time. If you don't have a chisel like that, carefully you can go in. I'm going to make this a little bigger anyway, and just cut a little V groove or a little chamfer on either side with the point of your chisel. Just up to the end. And then when you go to put your saw in, that'll just help guide it in place, makes it a little bit easier. Clean that up just a little. Okay, I've got a couple of examples of how I've mounted these and they're a little bit different, so I'll show them to you both. This one is a very shallow cabinet. And as a result, I've got the way I mounted this is uh, when you pull a saw out, there's actually a little flat spot cut on this corner that allows this to come to rest with the bottom of the cabinet and hold it securely in place. And then you get the tipping point and it goes back and it's actually a combination of the horn on the saw touching the back wall, but this back side of the holster is always making, always also making contact with the back. Now my pivot pin is right here. And you got to play around with it a little bit to get it to the point where it moves exactly the way you want. This example is a deeper cabinet. So I have the saws at the far back. And depending on where you position it, it gives you more room out here in front. And what I have here is supposed to be a, pla a place to uh, store pens and pencils. It needs to be reshaped a little bit, but it works for this purpose. So when I bring that forward, and that's something that I'm going to eliminate on the final draft and I think it may just need a little brass, really thin brass washer in between each one, something so that when you pull out one saw, two don't come down. But what this does is this flat area lays up against this back and it holds it securely, presents it to you and it's easy to, to get out and put back in and then when it drops back in there, it's actually the horn of the saw that's touching the back wall. So depending on your cabinet, you're going to have to make some changes. But what I suggest you do is, is get a piece of uh, material that's the same size, not one that you've already put the time into hollowing out, and play around with that. So what we'll do with this one, let's assume that we're going to keep this at the back side of this. So what we've got to do is figure out where we're going to pivot this. You've got to have clearance on the bottom, so it's got to be up off of the bottom. And then how are you going to get it to stay put out here and you want it to come out far enough that you can easily get a hold of the saw so if the handle 
is sitting there. Actually, it's in more like that. And this one up against the wall, I would like to have it so that the handle is completely outside of the front of the cabinet so that you can readily grab hold of it and pull it out. So, I got a little bit of thinking on that. Okay, I'm going to use this piece of 1 inch MDF as just an experimental block. And I want to have the saw fastened to it because I need to have it in position to see how things are going to work. So I think what I'll do is just quickly go over to the bandsaw and cut out enough of this so I can get this to lay somewhat flat. And then what that'll do is allow me to uh, experiment with where we're going to position this. Okay, so that fits. Now we'll just tape this on. Okay, so space is almost always at a premium in a tool cabinet, and this is no exception. But if this is the cabinet that we were going to use, if we put it out here, then that means all of the space in the back is wasted. There's nothing we can do with it. So if we put it back here, we at least have, as I mentioned, a little bit of area out here we can salvage. So I know my, I've got to keep my pivot point above that bottom corner, obviously. So this is going to have to be raised up. So I'll put a block in there. So we've got to figure out where we can drill this. And then when that's out of there, that's going to allow this to tip forward. We've got to find our stopping point. And if we put this block back in, or at least have a block sitting in there, when this comes back to the, the storage position, it's going to keep this upright. And this will just come to the back and not rest on it if you don't want that to be resting on the horn of your saw. So we have to stay in this box in order to avoid hitting the blade on the larger saw. So let's just experiment and see. Of course the more material you have on either side of the hole the stronger it's going to be. So if we put it Right about there, so that's half and half. It's half and half an inch in, five eighths of an inch up from the bottom. So I'm just gonna. Now you can go over to the drill press. We want that to be nice and square. And since I'm using a quarter inch diameter steel rod to be the pivot point, then I obviously want a quarter inch diameter hole. So now the nice thing about a brad point bit is it'll actually create a little bit of a some holding power on the on the uh, on that back wall so we can we can remove this and we can pivot it without having to actually drill a hole in it so I want I've got to have clearance up here meaning the horn is we don't want the horn bumping up against it so that's inside the back now this piece has got up high enough I should be able to take that out leave it back here as a stop block so we tip that forward, and depending on where we stop this determines how much extra room we get we gain in the front. But if we wanted to have the handle completely clear, we'd need to be there. And then when we come back, we've got a stop block here, and that's going to put it exactly where we want. So I'm going to grab a pencil, do that again, so if we had it stop I don't know if it needs to be that far forward. We'll just draw a line on here. Now, depending on what you're going to use this space for 
you've got to have something that's going to act as a stop for all of them. So it can't be just one up against the, this upright. You've got, to, you've got to come all the way out here. So as I mentioned, what I did over here is I just built something that I could incorporate into a place to hold pencils. You leave that one up to your imagination. Okay, and that's where it is. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a whack. Okay. Now we can use this as a guide. Since we cut this, this uh, sample block to be the exact same size as the rest of the pieces, so the rest of the holsters. So I'm going to take that over to the drill press and I'll simply clamp that over top of the holster and just drill down through that so that it's placed exactly where I want. Then when we come back, we can use that as a guide to go in there and drill that hole. Okay, I'm going to label this as my master. And if we use this, then everything should work out right. That's going to be our gauge. Now this is going to be difficult if you don't have a drill that allows you to get down that close, especially when you're up against another surface. So you may have to accommodate or make that change in elevating this a little bit higher. But I've got a right angle drill that will allow me to get right down there. It's right at its limitation, but it'll work. So I'll take this out of the way. And I think what I'll do is put this in here, use this as a means of lining up the two pieces, and then clamp this in place. Take that out. Now I don't want to drill all the way through. You obviously have the option of drilling a nice clean hole all the way through, so if you ever have to take it apart, but I'm going to leave the other side open. Right about there. to cut this rod but we'll go through and and drill all of our holsters the same I'm going to have a block back here that will be secured right there as I mentioned whatever you're going to use you have to decide but we have to have something that is going to allow them to rest or come to rest up against I'm just going to go buzz this off at about uh, six or seven inches. And depending on what you're going to put on the other side, I'll show you a couple of examples. On my traveling case, on the other side of my three pull-out holsters, I have a piece that kind of looks like that. This one holds a, an awl, and this one holds a tool called a Kerfex 10. So that's where the other end of the rod is. On this one, I've got the other end of it. Now remember, again, this is just a prototype. I've just got a spacer in here so that this one can tilt out and it's got my three marking gauges. And obviously I had to have clearance on the side, so that's why the spacer. So the spacer is going to hold the other piece of the rod. Whatever way you're gonna do it, you gotta get it lined up properly. So I'm gonna use a, a dowel center. I'll just put that in there. I'll line this up with the back. and then just push against that pin. And 
that'll give me an accurate mark. And I can go over to my drill press and finish or drill that hole. This one can go all the way through or it can be stopped, but I'm going to do it all the way through. Let's try putting this together. So just to review this, this piece would be secured. This piece, obviously, whatever it is, is going to be secured. Here's our the other half of our uh, support. Now, I'm going to put washers in between these just because I don't want one coming out and pulling the others with it. And I think these are a little more than what we're going to want. Now, this, actually, it's going to be a little bit difficult to do. How are we going to do this? We could tape them. No, I know how we can do it. Think we need one on the outside? I don't think so. Clamp on that. Oh, let's see if that works. Actually, we'd have to drop our saw in out here. You wouldn't be able to access it from the top. Put that in, put it in place. And that, if you look on this side, there's a little more space there than I would like but it certainly makes it so that only one comes out at a time. Easy to access, easy to retrieve or put back in. There you go, saw holsters. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. Now I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the icon with the plane and the chisel, it'll take you to our website, introduce you to all of our tools that we actually manufacture right here, as well as our workshops, both in person and online. Good luck.